Something that medical schools are very quick to sell to prospective applicants is the fact that they still use human cadavers and full body dissection for teaching anatomy. But is this still necessary in the modern day? Hi guys, my name's Ollie. I'm a third year medical student at the University of Warwick in the United Kingdom. This is part of the medical school interview question series. Now, first and foremost, this can be a very emotive topic, particularly among education specialists. Historically, anatomy was always taught in medical school through the use of cadaveric dissection. That is to say, a room full of medical students would huddle around a demonstrator who would dissect pieces of a dead body kind of bit by bit and you'd go through the relevant anatomy and explore different parts of the body in different sessions, removing layer after layer, piece after piece, until you've in theory seen everything you need to see as it sits in the human body. Alternatively, students may go through this themselves, following some sort of guide, visualising each component as they went. But the question then becomes, due to increasing dissemination of knowledge with resources such as the internet and new technology, things like 3D virtualization of these structures, the use of augmented reality and VR, some medical schools are choosing to leave this practice behind completely, even labelling it as obsolete in some cases. Before we go any further, I think it's important to note that where I'm training at Warwick, we have used what are called plastinated specimens, which is still quite an unusual approach for medical schools, where you're using real human tissue and human cadavers that have been already dissected to highlight and isolate the particular structures you want to see. They're then preserved as they are using the plastination process. And then there's a huge collection of these, which we are taught anatomy with, with demonstrators for each set of models, as it were. You'll have seen these models before if you've ever gone to something like the Body Works exhibition, for example. It's exactly the same company that makes them. So I think the next thought is that it's in theory perfectly possible to learn all the anatomy that would be required of you for medical school to pass your final exams from a textbook without ever having seen another person, let alone a dead one or have bits of it cut up. This is because medical school exams tend to be more about the theory than the actual practice, which means that you can use this sort of idealized, perfect view of the human body that appears in medical textbooks. But the advantage of a human cadaver, obviously, is that you're then able to see how these structures actually appear in real life. The understanding of which does become important when you start to practice as a doctor. But medical school exams and the things you do as a doctor are actually very, very different. So there is still a bit of a divide between the anatomy that you might want to know for a theory exam and the anatomy that you will actually need for medical practice. But ultimately, diagnosis, disease management, examination and treatment of patients all rely on a fundamental level of understanding of how viscera, vessels, everything else lie in the human body. I think we can all agree on that. So what might the advantages of having cadaveric teaching be? Well, for surgeons, certainly, or medical students who are thinking about becoming surgeons, use of cadavers and real human flesh is essentially the only way to achieve true haptic feedback when putting knife to skin. That is to say that a surgeon or someone doing an operation has to essentially at some point train on a human who they can't hurt in order to know what it will actually feel Feel like to operate on a live human when the time comes. Our simulators and models are getting increasingly good and high fidelity. I hate to use aviation industry metaphors and comparisons, I think they're phenomenally unuseful when it comes to medical education and training. But what I'm trying to say is that you can spend thousands and thousands of hours in a flight simulator, but I'm sure that when it's your first time flying a plane, by yourself in the real thing with real engines full of people that's going to feel very different so until the models get so good as to be able to perfectly replicate the human body you're still going to need to practice on the human body at some point it's obviously also true that if medical students are using real human bodies to learn anatomy they'll get a good feel for the variation in anatomy that actually exists in the real world. Just as no two humans look the same on the outside, identical twins notwithstanding, we all look very different on the inside. Organs can actually be in different positions, we can have different nerves and blood vessels supplying different things, it can be a bit of a mess. Textbooks and learning resources tend to use this perfect, idealised, averaged version 
of the internal human body, but in practice it's likely that a surgeon would never see the exact same internal environment twice when they were operating. But what about the technological solutions? In the present day, we have 3D models and virtualization suites that are capable of generating immensely detailed and accurate versions of the body which can very, very easily provide the level of understanding that a medical student needs. And in many, many cases, the visualization that you get using these types of programs is actually much better than what you would ever achieve during a dissection due to the ability to just remove and eliminate structures that are in the way. And you don't have any mucus, fluid, other things that would obscure the thing you're trying to see. None of that is there you're often able to manipulate it in ways that you would never be able to with a cadaver in front of you, such as flipping it around, inverting it, taking away layer by layer in some strange orientation. And so these programs offer you views that you would never ever be able to normally achieve during a dissection. The last thing to think about is the, the ethical issue surrounding the use of human tissue, because ultimately that's obviously what a cadaver is. It's a real person that's donated their body to science and for medical education. It's a great privilege to be able to see a human tissue specimen. But they also represent additional problems for medical schools in terms of having the licensing. You've got to have appropriate facilities to store them securely. You've got to have named people responsible for them. You've got all the ethical considerations, things about transporting them. And not only that, but you're obviously very limited by how good your anatomy demonstrator or your dissector is if they're the ones that are supposed to be leading the teaching. And because increasing numbers of medical schools are dropping, cadaveric dissection and prosection for their teaching, that means that competent dissectors are also becoming rarer because there's less demand for them, so why would you train to do that? And on the flip side, if students are increasingly learning using these virtual technology-based solutions and never come near a cadaver when they're training, how can they ever be expected to become a competent dissector? So all of this ultimately means that using these 3D, these technological solutions, is logistically simply much easier for medical schools. And if the outcomes are generally the same, which by the way, we statistically know that they are, no means of teaching medical students anatomy has been shown to be statistically better than any other. And instead, it basically seems to come down to how determined a particular medical student is to learn, which is basically the same for all learning. So there we go, guys. That's brought us to the end of this exploration of whether or not cadavers are still necessary for medical education. Please hit that like button for me, leave a comment, subscribe. Don't forget to go and check out postgradmedic.com for more free videos just like this, hints and tips on getting through your medical interview. Thanks for watching guys, there are three ways you can support the channel. The first one is to like, comment, subscribe, share this video with a friend, just enjoy it generally. Second, you can buy me a coffee if you found it useful using my Ko-Fi link, which will help keep me awake during the editing process. And then thirdly, you can use my referral link to save 10% off your first year of Complete Anatomy 2020, my favorite 3D anatomy learning tool. Take care guys, and I'll see you next time.